Right. So I've been doing some tinkering around uh, yesterday. I threw the battery back in uh, just to do some uh, tests with uh, the power here. And uh, I thought I wasn't getting any power back here. Uh, did some finagling around. And come to find out, I'm getting power to all. Uh, see, blue is uh, fuel. Uh, green is oil pump. Uh, yellow used to be the uh, CO2 uh, solenoid because um, I had the idea of using a solenoid to open the uh, circuit for the uh, pneumatic start, but uh, we're not using this currently. Uh, what else have I got? There should be a violet wire in here. Right here, right in front of my face. Uh, violet wire goes to the ignition. That, that's actually the trigger for the uh, coils. And uh, red wire here uh, is a uh, source for the coils. That's all good. I've got power to those. Um, and what I did was I just isolated um, oil pump, got the oil pump working. I also tried the afterburner pump, got it working. Uh, ignition, I can hear the, I can hear them popping off in there, but they sound kind of weak. I don't know if this is a, I don't think it's a weak battery. Uh, let's see, all the gauges still cycle and do their thing. Right now I don't have a sensor for the oil temperature, but uh, that would actually be this little gray wire here. Um, this is uh, the signal wire for oil temp. This is a uh, power for afterburner. Uh, there's going to be a box laid in here. I've got right here. Uh, the uh, speed controller I put together. Uh, this, when this is all said and done, this little guy will tuck down in here. Maybe. There you go. I still got some work to do with that. But that'll fit down in here. And I can uh, control the afterburner pump. But that is way down the list of priorities right now. Uh, anyway, that's why this wire is like that. This will actually feed power to the speed controller. And then from the speed controller to this guy. That'll be, that'll control afterburner uh, pressure. Anyway, um, do do do. Power the battery seems okay. I'm at seventy percent, putting out twelve point four volts. So, anyway, I'll double check that ignition. Maybe the sparkulators are not firing off. I don't know. Maybe it's just a bad ground. Uh, one of them is popping off. But. Anyway, I got to the fuel pump and I noticed I was getting a voltage. I was getting voltage through my ground. This guy here. Uh, um, I was getting 12 volts through the ground. And it was it shorted out. The fuel pump, something's up here. Um... I tried, I isolated it, just getting 12 volts straight to the pump. I grounded it, nothing. Uh, a lot of sparks and anger. Um, so, fortunately, the old oil pump is identical to the fuel pump. And if you guys remember, um, I'm pretty sure the, the diaphragm seal uh, was no good in the old pump and it was just anytime it would build oil pressure it was just forcing oil into the casing and just leaking out it was no good but the actual pump still worked the actual um, the motor so what I'm gonna do is I will take the screws out of the actual diaphragm here pull this away We'll swap the pump out and see if we don't, uh, see if we can't free that up.
but anyway i gotta take a break uh the coffee that i was so happy to get this morning has come back with a vengeance so and i could use a break from this for a little bit um just tidying up miscellaneous stuff i had uh i had some bolts that were sticking out kind of long so i sheared those off uh now less stuff to get caught while pulling it out of the truck Got some leaves and stuff to clean out of here and what else am i doing i'm gonna start uh, going through and try to button down these uh oil and fuel lines so we don't get any unnecessary rubbing on anything like that's going to be a close fit right there so i might try to pull that in a little bit away from that clamp there everything in here i mean it's it is what it is what i could do is maybe wrap these with some tape or something just so they're not rubbing on each other that's concerning um another one i got here is where this two this oil feed line comes in i need to secure this guy like i said just going through tidying up some stuff oh i got the uh i had some rubbing issues with the steering uh, the tie rods were obviously rubbing on my uh, outriggers so what i did yesterday was actually move the tie rods forward a little bit and uh, previously i trimmed this back i moved this up a notch and then trimmed off the excess but we're, we're good now we should be she's a little close there but from lock to lock you know, we got plenty of space there so maybe this whole thing could actually shift around. But anyway, we got to go take care of some business, but we're getting somewhere. You cold-blooded motherfucking piece of shit. Okay, I feel better. Back to work. All right, so anyone following this disaster went ahead, took the diaphragm off the fuel pump, and... Uh, tried to spin the motor by hand and it was locked up tighter than county jail so uh, but one thing that I did notice was uh, when I was pulling the screws out of the diaphragm it was just pouring water out of there uh, on top of the lovely diesel mess that I made but um, uh, what I did was I went ahead and I fitted in, or fitted it. Uh, I already made this tube a while back uh, to go into the bottom of the tank, but, um, you know, I've been hesitant about taking that fitting apart because it's just going to pour fuel everywhere. But since I already made a mess, I went ahead and got that routed in there. comes down, fuel shutoff valve, and then right up to the fuel pump. So that's where that mess came from but anyway it had to get done uh back to this there was just water pouring out of here so once all the water was out you know actually uh, i just put a wrench on this and just kind of freed it up once it was freed you know enough that i can rotate it by hand i fed the juices to it and uh, got it running again uh let's see Still runs good so i think we're back on track go ahead and kill the power before we start a fire um i'm gonna put the diaphragm back on the motor get the fuel lines hooked back up and then i can get back into finishing this wiring which what started this whole mess to begin with but uh uh i think we're good i think crisis averted actually i went ahead and uh added this uh chassis ground because the only one i had was this and it it worked but i went ahead and added this runs 
runs up to this uh, bolt here on the seat and then now I can actually run all my grounds to that so hopefully that'll work oops don't worry about that little mess So, finished getting all of it back together. You're probably wondering why I took the turbo and the combustion chamber all out. Uh, what I was trying to do, see if I can find this piece, uh, this little guy. What I was trying to do is see if I could get this uh, adapter uh, in between the, the turbo and the, the engine mount. Uh, I was hoping it would squeeze up in there and it would uh, kind of raise the height of that exit compared to uh, the fitting going back into the oil tank because um, I just want gravity feed back into the oil tank and uh, as it sits it's pretty close but I think just kind of clocking the tank as far as I could uh, I think we'll fix that issue, but I had the opportunity and the weather to go ahead and at least try it and see uh, For one that little fitting I just showed you <clears throat> the the uh, bolt pattern is too too close together it, I could get it to work if I maybe open the holes up, but I still think it's gonna leak like a sieve um, you know, sometimes the juice ain't worth the squeeze if you picking up what I'm laying down. But, uh, anyway, got that all back together. Uh, what I didn't get a chance to do today was, uh, I was really hoping we'd get to a point where we could, uh, f you know, open the fuel and, uh, get all the air out of the lines for the fuel and uh, the same for the oil. We could fill up the oil tank, get the uh, oil pump primed and uh, start getting some of the air out of the system, bring up the pressure and start leak checking all these new fittings I've put on because I know that's going to be full of fun. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, I had I really did actually get a lot of stuff done today. I mean, I, I'm glad I was able to figure out what the electrical issue was uh, without having to pull the entire wire harness back out and the gauge cluster and everything. Um, so I did make some headway running the grounds. Um, just one or two little things I need to do. Uh, that will be done and everything will be happy um, another thing that i didn't get a chance to do when i had the chance i actually got sidetracked and forgot anyway uh where this outrigger goes back and uh, kind of supposed to attach to the frame of the go-kart uh, i don't i don't have anything holding that in there it's just sitting on the frame but uh, I was going to put a piece of uh, angle aluminum or angle iron, fit it in there, drill some holes, and get this mounted finally. But I uh, got kind of sidetracked with some other stuff. But uh, maybe if the weather holds up, it doesn't take anything to slide that little uh, go-kart stand out here and slide the uh, go-kart out. Uh, I've kind of perfected it, just doing it myself. But uh, anyway, I've been humping away on this thing for about eight hours now. My knee hurts. It's popping and cracking like a glow stick. I'm surprised it doesn't glow. 
and uh, quite honestly uh, I'm kind of ready for a cold beverage so uh, let's, we'll attack this tomorrow if the weather holds up we'll see